Hello everyone and welcome to this video. As you can probably guess from the title, I'm going to show you how to make a Five Nights at Freddy's kind of game in Game Maker. And yeah, I will try to keep this tutorial series really simple as I know a lot of you have no clue how to use Game Maker and I want you to learn it. So let's get started. This first episode is pretty much just going to be an introduction episode. I'm not really going to do much other than just tell you how to use Game Maker. So when you open up Game Maker and create a new project, your window should look somewhat like this. Uh, maybe not completely, but it should be similar at least. And then um, you have all these icons here up in the top of the screen. And um, when you click them, you can do stuff. Um, the green arrow right here, it plays the game, and uh, this thing is for debugging, but you don't really have to use that. Um, it's not re really that useful, just to pl displays some information like the frames per second and stuff. And this is if you want to exit the game and you for some reason can't exit it normally. And if the game glitches up and creates some graphical glitches, you use this one. But that really isn't important. The important stuff is all this stuff right here. Because this is all the stuff you use in Game Maker to create your game. And um, this, this is a sprite. Um, a sprite is kind of like an image. So when we click this, we can make an image file. And um, I'm just going to title it SPR underscore, let's say, um, uh, start button. Then we can make a button you have to press when you start the game. And to make your own sprite, you can click the edit sprite button then click this empty piece of paper and then enter the resolution of the sprite. So let's just say we want a 200 by 150 and that was a bit, bit too big I can see. Maybe instead just like this, yeah that looks a bit better. Um, and then we can use just like a normal drawing program, it does really nothing too special about it, it isn't that good or anything. I would really recommend using something else if you want to make good graphics, something like paint.net or photoshop or something because this really isn't that good but it works for just creating a normal square if I can just yeah there we go that looks fine and then we can use the text tool to like write a um, new game because we have to have a new game button and yeah there we go then we can of course also make a sound using this thing and I'm not going to do that right now because really I don't know what sound we should need and then we can also make a background and the backgrounds are very useful as it's the text that you have in your the back of your game and they are way faster to draw than sprites because a sprite needs an object to be drawn but a background can just be drawn directly to the background of the game so they're very useful and a path, you don't really need to use that so much for creating a Five Nights at Freddy's style game. You use them pretty much to um, make an object move in a path pretty much. And this is a script and you can use it to just execute some code without putting it uh, in the in that event in an object pretty much. If you, for example, want to, let's say, have a die script, then instead of putting the die code under all the times when you die, you can just put it under a script and call it script die, and then you can just call that script to run the code. And then um, this is a shader, and it's used for making graphical effects like the 3D effect in Five Nights at Pinkers 4. And a font, you know, you can make text <laughs> look a certain way. And a timeline, they're not useful whatsoever, and you should just ignore them. And an object, they, these are. Um, the things you use to put all your code in. Um, I'm just going to create an object start button and select the sprite and then when you have an object like this you can press the add event to create an event and the two most useful events are probably the create event and the step event. Um, the create event is called whenever the object is created. This could be in the start of the room or uh, when another object creates it. So let's just start by let's say giving it a create event and on the create event we can set up all the stuff the object should 
set up in the beginning. We really do not need anything for the button, but I'm just just to to show you, I'm just going to set its image blend to C underscore gray. This should set the color of the sprite to a gray color, so that whenever we click on it, it could change color to its normal color. Just you don't have to do this. It has really nothing to do with the button. Just to show you how the create events works. And then we have the step event. The step event is called every frame whenever the object is existing. So under the step event, we can say if um, well, I really don't know what we should put. In. It's a bit of a bad example with a button. I've just realized because there really isn't much you can do under the step event with a button. But let's say we want the button to, for some reason, move down. You can press I Y W plus equals ten, and now the button would go down with ten step, uh, pixels every step. But we really do not need anything right here. What we do need is a mouse event, and this is all the stuff you can do with the mouse. You can also create all this stuff in the step event yourself, but this is just way quicker, so you should use this instead of just making it manually in the step event. So let's just say we want it to change color whenever you hold the mouse away. So we can use the mouse enter um, event. And um, this means every time you take your mouse and hold it away like I do with this X in the corner of the object right now, it changes color. We are going to do that with our button too. So when you enter, it's going to set its image underscore blend to C underscore white. This pretty much just means it removes all the color or whatever. So sprite, so it's going to look as it did before. And then we're also going to create a mouse leaf. And we're going to here set it to um, image underscore blend equals C underscore gray. Pretty much just set it back to the gray color when you the mouse leaves the object. So we can just try this out by creating a room because the rooms are pretty much the window, whatever. It's all the stuff you can see on the screen and uh, it's where we have to put all your objects. So when we create a room, it should look somewhat like this. And um, it's a great idea to give it a name like um, main menu and set the resolution to like 100, uh, 1280 by 2720 uh, and uh, then put our new game button in here. So let's start the game right now by pressing the green arrow up there and as you can see it runs like this and when you take the mouse over the button it changes color. So now I've shown you how to use the very basics of Game Maker Studio. So let's get on uh, to making the game. Um, yeah, and to make the game, we of course need another button. But if we don't have to redraw all of the button, we can just duplicate this one, title it sprite underscore load button, or whatever you want to call it. And um, let's say just remove this part because it can still say game, we just have to say load game, and then sprite load. And now we can just place it somewhere like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and then we can also just duplicate the object, object underscore load button, and it can pretty much just be the same thing for now. <coughs> and um, as you can see, we can just place it wherever we want to, like if we want the two buttons here and here, and we also just have to remember to change the sprite, so you do that just by clicking there. Um, now we have a load uh, game and a new game button. And now you probably also want a background here in the room. So as I said before, you have to click the background key to make a background. And let's just title it bck underscore uh, menu. And um, it should be the same size as the room for the most part. You could make it smaller or bigger, but for this we just have to make it the same size. And um, I, we could just use a gradient as the background for our room, so I'm just going to do that because that's quick to make. And if you want to uh, change the transparency too to the gradient, you just have to tick this box. And then um, let's say we want it to be a really spooky game, so we have to have blood red colors, of course. 
because that's how we make stuff spooky. So now we have this very beautiful background. So we can go on the backgrounds in the room and right here we can choose the background. And um, as you can see, if we run the game, now the background shows up right here and uh, both the buttons look pretty good. Um, yeah, so um, uh, yeah, I also have to make this, you know, when you click these two buttons, you have to open another room where you have to press another button saying yes or no to confirm if you want to load the game or go to a new game. So let's just quickly 